My goal in this video is to explain data oriented design in around 10 minutes, hopefully 5 minutes to keep it short and sweet. So what's the point of this video? Well, I just explained it, but my goal and the takeaway I want is for beginners to have the key to start the basic understanding into data oriented design. And as I believe there's not a lot of good information out there to get you started in data oriented design and there's not a lot of good simple coded examples to really show how to apply it in modern day programs and the programs you write. So what is data oriented design? Well basically it's just focusing on how your data is transmitted and how it's transformed throughout your program and how you need it for the problems that you're dealing with at hand. How does this differ between object oriented programming? Well with OOP, you focus on designing your programs around the real world environment. So for example, this class called car, and you just give it, you give it human and real world attributes to help you kind of visualize it in your program and make programming it more simple. So what are the main downfalls with object oriented programming? Well, it's a lot slower. And what I mean by that is compared to Dodd, it allows for faster programs to be written, faster programs to be executed, and in my opinion, a lot cleaner code. Well, why is this the case? Well, we have to think about our cache. Well, the cache is the fastest access to our memory. So if we, we wanna use our cache as efficiently as possible. As if we don't, our problem is, is our program runs slower because we're not utilizing that very efficient memory that we have access to. Object oriented programming fails to use this cache efficiently because it pollutes our cache with a lot of unnecessary information. So as you can see, our car has a position right here, which is a bunch of floats, our velocity, a max speed, and a color. So when we access, say, the update position function, we pollute our cache with all this other data in the in the cache line. So say this is 56 bytes and we only have a 64-bit cache line or byte cache line then we're polluting our cache with a bunch of useless information when in actuality all we need is like 16 bytes of data right here. So you fill it up with a lot of useless information that you don't actually need, causing you to not use it as efficiently as you could. Well, how is data oriented design better than this? Well, the way it achieves this is through using homogeneous data, which basically means if we cut out the fancy talk is it uses the same type data. So it's a combination of that and only using the data and to actually solve the problem at hand. So if we wanted to update our position, you can see that we just need our position X and Y and our velocities at X and Y. So at the end of the day, all we need to do to solve this problem is our positions and our velocities. But when you call this update position with say car dot update position, you are polluting the cache line with all this other useless information that doesn't matter to you. But Dodd will only focus on focusing on the data that you need to solve the problem. This is where it comes in that data that Dodd uses the cache line more efficiently because we only load our cache line with the data that we need, not the extra pollutants that mess up our cache line. I think Dodd uh, allows programs to be written more efficient like faster is because you spend more time focusing on how the data is stru like structured and how to actually solve the problem rather than focusing on how your new object that you have to be created fits in your hierarchy and which should it inheritance and what memory should it have. Because with Dodd, all you have to do is focus on the data at hand and how to solve the problem. I also believe it leads to cleaner code because it just, you, it just shows what data is taken in and what's getting spit out how the data is getting manipulated, and what at hand is being used to solve the problem. In my opinion, it's just I just think it leads to like more elegant reading for the person who's reviewing the code. So let's get into a real coded example I coded up here to show you how it's faster. So my technical problem I'm trying to solve here is just take update a velocity and then update our position to the velocity, right? So with object oriented, we might create a car class, has a position, velocities, a max speed, and it might have a color. 
in a real game this would be a lot more complex or in other software these classes may be way more complex and have a lot more data that's going to pollute our cache line but for example i think this is around like 54 56 bytes so when we talk about a cache line every time we access a function or we access a member we're filling it up with 56 or 54 bytes of data per cache line so here's the goal of the program we do this update velocity thing which takes in uh, x and a y which is our increments we check once we add it to our current velocity if it exceeds max speed if it doesn't we officially add it to the speed to our current velocity and we do the same thing for the y and then we update our position according to that velocity which is we just increment our position according to the current velocity we have functions I, I also have a set rgb function which is just like an actor of a getter and setter but i don't have a getter i don't like the setter but you get the point so i have a car array of five cars um it's all these examples are we ran on the stack not the heap just for you know a, con a constant value and here's all the data that is going to be associated with them so i have this function here called loop is we loop over the five cars in our array we update their velocity by 25 and then we update their position so if we go down here we can run the program which all i'm going to do is increment our cars a thousand times and adjust their position according to the velocity that we get in total 1400 microseconds and an average of 70 microseconds per function call now let's switch over to dodd and let's see how this changes so with the same testing, we get a total of 1,163 microseconds and an average of 58 microseconds per call. And we can see that it, on average, basically took around 48 microseconds per call. So why is this the case? Well, as we can see, this is our Dodd example. Well, here's one tool of dealing with this problem. So we now create a car, and this is an entity component system where we just attach components to our entity. In this case, we have a position, we have our speed, a velocity, and our RGB. And we split up our data in arrays. I don't actually have this as a struct in the code, but I have it planned out right here. This is the same data as it is an object oriented, which you can see right here. But, it's, but the difference is it's split up, spread out in arrays. You can see each each data type gets their own array and all the data that we need for the cars. So when we actually declare the function, and for example, we'll look at update pause, we just focus on the data needed to complete the job. So here we need the velocities. And what this means is just saying we need a pointer to a float array. And this points to the first index of that float array. So we need a float array for our velocities, a float array for our positions, and we need an int count, which just controls how many cars we are incrementing through our array. So after we take in all this data, which is what we call read data, we're reading in all this data, and then we just loop through and add it. Why is this more efficient? Well, like I said, we're not polluting our cache with any unnecessary data. We're only focusing on the data at hand that we need, which is these bytes, these four byte, four byte floats and instead of polluting the cache with a bunch of stupid information we only fill it up with necessary information also computers are way faster at running through arrays especially rows through arrays additionally when they're ran through homogeneous data which means that they don't have to realign the memory because if you have different si sizes of memory the computer has to realign in order to make sure it's incrementing and going through the memory addresses right it spends less time trying to figure out how it should align its memory and more just going through like a rapid machine gun through all of the data that we're trying to increment through. Because with the cars, for example, when we, when we loop through the five cars and we finally get to the car we want, we have to hop 56 bytes to the next car, then then realign to the data that we need and then do manipulate our data there. So we can see again with our update velocity, we've taken velocities, a max speed, an increase in, a, in a, an increase in x and y and a count. We do the same thing here. We just take in the data that we need, increment the database on the condition, and then that's all the data we need to solve the problem. So that's why it ends up being faster. You may look at it and be and think it looks a lot more complicated, but in actuality, it's pretty simple. All we're doing is just taking these arrays. At this given array, we get this data, and we just 
use what we need with that data. Yes, the functions are taking in more parameters and everything, but the, you get such a bigger performance increase that it's worth it. And honestly, it's a lot simpler because if you have a car that is just says update position, if you just are entering the code base, you don't know what's happening. But if you see these arguments or these parameters right here, you kind of know that what's happening with the data and you can kind of figure out what's going on and you know what's going on here. So some key takeaways I would like to really drive home is data oriented design is just focusing on the data and how it's transformed and what we need to do the job. So here, all we need to do the job to update our position is our current position and our velocity, right? Instead of going over here and having to call in all this other data from the car, including our cache, we just only focus on the data at hand. This also means that it's also reusable too, if because at the end of the day, all it's take it's not just for a specific car, it's just for anything that has a velocity and has a position that needs to be incremented. There are also in data oriented design, there's a lot of tools to handle different jobs. It's just like the entity component system right here is a different job, but the goal is to split up your data into tables like a database and different arrays of data and just figuring out how you just need to transform and pull from the data to get the job done. Also, I would say don't overcomplicate it. It doesn't need to be that complex. You just need to focus on the problem and just don't premature optimize your stuff, right? Say you have a really f big function that takes a lot of time and you put into the de and you're just trying to optimize it early. Don't do that. Don't use premature optimization, please. Like, don't overcomplicate it. It is not that complicated. You just have to think about the data. Trust me. There's a lot of good resources out here, but my goal here was just to show a little example and a little simple example. If you have any complaints or you have any feedback or anything, please comment it. If you have any questions, I'll comment them and I'll answer. My point here that I really want to get across, I just want to be the key that allows you to understand data-oriented design and just a really simple example of how of what it means to do it. And I'm not the end all say all, okay? I'm not really good at data oriented design. I just struggled to understand it for a really long for a while until I finally understood it because of the lack of beginner tips are out there. So I really strongly encourage you guys to go research. There's a lot of good resources out there that really put things in perspective. There's books, there's articles and there's videos. And yeah. So hope you guys have a good day and I hope this helped. If you have any complaints, again, say in the comments and I'll probably redo the video if I did it that bad of a job.